Coming up in today's video, we take a look at how I attempt to paint an authentic tan and water camouflage scheme on my 20mm AB figures Fulsham Jaeger. This technique involves a bit of work, but the end outcome will speak for itself. Let me know at the end of the video how you found it and if you'll use this tutorial in the future. Okay guys, so as I normally do, I've given my model a coat of German camo black brown. Any sort of black brown will do just nicely. And then to start off with the initial color, I'm using Middlestone from AK Interactive. Again, you could use Vallejo Middlestone. They all roughly look the same. Um, I just find the AK versions just a little bit better for what I'm trying to, trying to achieve with this tan and water smock just be um as you know you can be pretty carefree here uh, don't be too worried about making a few mistakes but as i always say it's always best to try and avoid going too mental um purely because it's just going to make the cleanup a little bit more time consuming and then I'm going to be coating the entire model in Umbar wash. So it's one of my favorite washes to use. I use Citadel washes from time to time, um, but I found recently the new Citadel washes are quite glossy. Um, and I've looked on Google and YouTube and I see people saying, oh, there's, there's paint at the bottom of the pot, but that uh, never seems to be the case for me. And then I'm going back over the model in Middlestone. So I'm making sure that I'm using an older brush here and you can see that as I did in my original splinter video um, I'm now scratching away at parts of the model just to start getting those rain marks uh, to start forming um, but I'm also making sure I'm highlighting some of the detail in the jacket as well. Majority of the jacket is going to be hidden uh, with the camo that we apply so you don't have to be too crazy in terms of like I've got to pick this crease out and I've got to do this. Don't worry about that. Just focus on getting those rain marks and picking out like his pocket where this, the arm meets the, the, the torso and all of that. Now you can see how bashed up this brush is and this is where I'm using middle stone and white at a 50-50 ratio. And again, I'm creating those rain marks. But this time I'm not really too bothered about his pockets trying to capture detail with them. I'm just painting these in vertical lines exactly the same technique as what I used in my original splinter video link in the description um, but I'm um, just using this old brush you will get a brush like this over time where it, all the it's not a point anymore the the strands have separated um, and don't throw it away because they come in handy for this thing this very thing where I'm trying to create straight lines. Now I'm using a mixture of German camo bright green and Luftwaffe camo green. The reason I mixed them both together is because the German camo bright green, which is going to be my primary color, is just a bit too bright. It's a bit on the lighter bright green side. So add a drop um, of that Luftwaffe German camo. It's a bit of a darker green. You want to do it at a 75 to 25 ratio. So 75% of the bright green and 25% of the Luftwaffe cam. Really, you just put a blob of the bright on and then a tiny blob of the darker green. Mix it together and you'll get something similar to this. Now I'm using Saddle Brown to achieve the brown uh, of the tan. So unlike Splinter as we know it, tan and water, it's more flowy. So it's not a super sharp uh, lines these are more of a flowy line so exactly like I did with the green I'm just guiding my brush along and putting in little swirls making sure they sort of all join together um, and using Google as I always do for my reference photos um, and compare tan and water to splinter because you'll understand the difference between the two now I'm not going to use the actual term for it because my German is awful now, once I've done that, I want to bring the colors down a touch. So as I always do, I'm using brown glaze from AK Interactive. It's part of their uniform definition uh, filter set. I'm not sure if you can find it anymore, but any brown glaze will do. It doesn't have to be AK Interactive. Don't go too crazy. And remember, it's a filter, not a wash. So it's just going to put a brown tinge on there. Now I'm using Iraqi sand. 
And what am I doing with this Iraqi stand? I'm doing the final little raindrops. So I've gone crazy with the raindrops, but hopefully once you see the end result, you'll appreciate this little extra step really helps with making the jacket look more authentic. So again, I'm painting in vertical lines and I'm going in between the gaps where there's bits of that middle stone still creeping out from where the green and the brown haven't met. Now, once I've done that, I'm going back to a better brush and I'm going over all the mistakes that I made with my original black brown color. Um, and yeah, just taking my time here. But the process is very quick because as I always do, I try and be as tidy as I can be when doing the uniform so the cleanup process isn't as frustrating and boring. Now for the trousers I'm using field grey base which is a green uniform uh, from AK Interactive. It's part of their field grey or German uniform standard colours uh, set. Um, I really recommend the AK colour ranges um, for their paint set so I've got many of them now. I've got all the oak leaf variants, I've got the Italian camo one splinter and um, this is the only one that tan and water they don't do a set for but you can use all of the paints from the splinter anyway because they're exactly the same if you really wanted to now for the bread bag and his uh, sling on his rifle i'm using german field gray world war ii if he had gators i'd be painting them in there like an mp40 or 44 pouch uh, painting them in that color as well um, and just making sure that I'm getting the whole item uh, painted but not making any mess because I don't want to have to then go back over the other areas I'm going to paint. Okay so for wood I'm using flat earth. So flat earth um, is a really nice base color for wood in my opinion so I'm going to be using flat earth. I'm also going to leave some of that black brown coming through where the two bits of wood meet. So at the very top of the rifle um, and the sort of like bottom half of the rifle, they meet and there's a crease in there where the obviously bits of wood get pressed together with the metal. Um, so I'm leaving the black brown line through there just to create some form of a shadow or a crease line. Um, so it's up to you how much, if you want to do that, the wash later on will probably help with that anyway, but I just find that black sort of helps it stand out a bit more. And if he had a shovel, which this character does. I'm painting that as well and any other wooden object. So if we had a hand grenade, uh, the German hand grenade, then I'd be painting that in, in that color too. For the water bottle, I'm using English uniform. Uh, I think English uniform works really well for these water bottles. It's only something I've uh, only started using recently, um, but it actually is a really good color for the uh, water bottle. All right, now I'm going back over what I've just painted. So the rifle, the, the uh, bread bag, the water bottle, all of that stuff with unbar wash. Now you're thinking, why couldn't you just do this when you were doing the rest of the uniform, save you having to keep using the same wash uh, all the time? That's a very good question. I'm just very particular. I like to do my uniform, go over, do the equipment, go over it, and then do the, the face or flesh. So it's up to you how you want to do it. So now we're just repeating what we've just done. So back onto the trousers using that green uniform color from AK, the original color that we used before we put that base, uh, before we put that wash on. Um, and now I'm leaving some of that darker green to give us the creases and I'm just working it. So I'm just doing little bits at a time um, and just working it to, until I'm really satisfied with how it looks. So you'll see all the creases start to pop you'll see that there's crease marks in the trousers, there's bends where his knee is, all of that. Now this guy has like extra uh, rifle pouches, so I'm using Luftwaffe uniform World War II for this. I'm not sure how historically accurate this is in Normandy, this is what these guys are gonna be based for. Um, I'm pretty sure all the Luftwaffe blue sort of stuff like the bread bag and all of that was phased out by this point, um, but I could be wrong. Again, I'm no historian when it comes to this stuff, but I really wanted to show you guys how easy Luftwaffe Blue is to paint. So if you wanted to do Luftwaffe Blue, it's very iconic as well. Um, this is a good starting step. Now for any of the metal items, I'm using German Grey. So make sure you're painting the rifle, which is obviously going to have metal parts to it. Don't forget the buckles for the straps. 
uh, and any other metal parts that are around. Uh, so the canteen, for example, uh, the bayonet, where the metal part of the bayonet will meet with the, the rifle, uh, can be painted in this German grey, uh, and yeah, anything else really. Just make sure you're taking your time and you're looking over the model because it's always something that I miss. So I'm guilty of it as I know we probably all are. So just take your time and keep looking at what you're painting before you go, yep, I'm done. Now I'm using German Grey from AK Interactive. Now the two, the differences between Vallejo and German, uh, sorry, Vallejo AK Interactive and their German Greys are actually quite significant. I find the German Grey from um, AK Interactive works much better for like a black livery look which is why i'm using it for the webbing so the the strap so this y strap uh the part of the shovel where it's covered um and any other part of the webbing that hasn't uh, needed a, a color for example that's what i'm using for that and then to highlight that y strap and any other part of the webbing i'm using grey uniform from AK Interactive. It's also part of their German grey uniform set. So if you were to buy that uniform set, you're gonna get the colors to do his trousers and you're gonna get the colors to do his uh, straps or webbing. Um, and that's gonna be perfect for all of your future World War II uh, German colors. Um, so it's probably a set worth buying in my opinion. Um, I primarily use Vallejo, but these AK ranges are something I've just started to use and I actually quite like them. Now I'm using black for his shoes. So just pushing that black on there. Some people will then try and highlight the shoes um, by using a, a German gray, for example, or a really dark gray. It's just not necessary for me at this scale. You'll see my technique is quite different. I'll put all my basing material on, and then when I'm dry brushing the bases, I use those dry brushes as a way of detailing those shoes as if they've got dirty. Now I'm using a black wash, so I'm using the black wash to paint any of those metallic parts. I'm also going to use the black wash to paint that Luftwaffe, or sorry, to wash that Luftwaffe blue, all those extra um, ammo pouches that are dangling over his neck. I wouldn't use Umbar wash for this because the brown and the blue just don't go well together. The black is much better colour for what we're going to be trying to achieve. So now I'm going back over the bread bag and the rifle strap and all of that with German Field Grey World War II. And exactly the same process, I'm picking out all the details. So the bread bag obviously attaches to his webbing. So I'm making sure that they stand out. Any of the creases in there, there's the bread bag folds over. So I'm painting the underneath or the bottom part of the bread bag and the top part separately so you can make that out. And as I said, I'm also painting the rifle strap but I'm leaving some of that darker color more in the inner part where the eye can't really see it just to create like a shadow. And then to highlight that German gray, I'm using green gray from Vallejo. And I'm just putting little bits of that color in little areas that are raised against picking out parts that are attaching to the webbing um, and just keep putting little bits on until you're satisfied. It's always better to put a tiny bit on your brush and just keep working it opposed to putting a big blob of paint on your brush and going, oh man, I've just absolutely screwed up. So just do little bits at a time and just take your time. Same with the rifle strap. I'm just picking out little bits here and just, just putting little lines here and there so I can always go back over it if I haven't done enough. And then back to the water bottle. So I'm using English uniform again and I'm just painting in the parts um, that you can obviously see and just leaving the little bits near the strap in that darker color. And back to the rifle again. So it's a very repetitive step. So we're using flat earth again and I'm just going along it. I'm not putting the whole thing in flat earth now. I'm using the darker flat earth and I'm just scratching this um, flat earth over the top of it again so now we're going to start creating like wood grains um, so to give it that effect I'm doing the scratching as I said and then I'll give it a further highlight later on the exact same process can be done with the shovel or the wooden part of the shovel as well 
Now to highlight those wooden objects I'm using old wood. For the rifle I'm doing like horizontal scratches, just little ones here and there, um, just to give it a little highlight and to make the wood look a bit more worn than um, you know a brand new rifle which obviously these guys wouldn't be too used to. They're just being pulled out of all over the shop. And then you'd use the exact same technique except you'd be doing um, straight lines on the wood. Uh, the wooden shovel, that is. Okay, for the metal highlight, I'm just using base lead belcher from Citadel, and I'm just doing little bits here and there, capturing the raised areas as I always do, adding a little line here and a little line there on the bits of the barrel. Obviously, the top of the rifle is all different parts of metal that's raised, so I'm just adding little lines here and there little dots just making it look a little bit more rifle like um, and just highlighting a few of those details as you can see here also make sure you don't forget the buckle for the strap and any other metal objects so on here i was doing the bayonet as well so for that luftwaffe blue uh, rifle extra rifle pouches i'm using luftwaffe uniform world war ii so i'm going back over that color but i'm just dotting these colors on um, and I'm building up the color. So as I say uh, many times, just a little bit of paint on that paintbrush and just adding little dots here and there. Keep building it up until I'm really happy. With these figures, especially the AB ones, the detail is pretty obvious to see. If you can't see it, use a magnifying glass and just pick out the little bits of detail that you can see. And then to give it a final highlight, I'm just adding little dots of Luftwaffe uniform and white at a 50-50 ratio and mixing those two up and just using little dots on the very edges of those extra pouches just to give them that final highlight. The strap also goes around his neck, so I'm just putting a little line around um, where that strap goes around his neck as well. So you should be able to see what I'm talking about in that shot. And then if you've um, got any handles for like the bayonet, I'm just highlighting them with German camo pale brown. And if there's any um, lever, so with the bayonet, there's like a levery um, holster for it. I'm using orange brown to highlight that as well. And then um, to highlight the trousers, I'm using green uniform and green grey from AK Interactive at a 50-50 ratio and just picking out all those raised edges as I do um, and just building it up. Just keep building it up. Don't point too much on your brush and let the paintbrush do the work. You'll find the edges and this process will start getting easier and easier with every model that you do. And then the very final highlight, I'm using green grey from AK Interactive and just taking my time here, making sure I've got a nice brush with a nice pointy end and just building that paint up as I do. Now, if you want to see how I paint the flesh, you're going to have to go back and watch some of my older videos. Uh, I didn't think I'd do it again because I've done so much of it. So I'll link those in the description um, for those videos if you wanna see how I paint his face. So there we go, we've got the finished product. Um, I think the tan and water camo actually looks awesome. I think it's my favorite camo that I've done so far as well. So that speaks a lot for itself. Um, if you like this tutorial and you think it's gonna be useful, please comment below. I'd love to know what you think of it. And I'm also running a giveaway, so if you're new to the channel, um, you've got until early March to get involved in the giveaway, you'll see the videos, my um, latest one before this one. Uh, and if you're watching this in a year's time, well, I'm sorry, you've unfortunately missed out, but I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come in the future. But yeah, love to hear what you guys think of this. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and let me know below what tutorial you would like to see next but until then i will catch you guys at the next one